Welcome to another segment of KISS. That is, keep it simple, sir. Keep it simple, senorita, senora, sister, thanks of God. We have another great production in the house. It's again full. We have one special guest today that has a lot of information that's going to share with you. Get a chance, get on the phone, call a neighbor, tell them KISS is on again with the one great uh, individual from our community. Today we have, praise God, Mrs. Angela Stewart, and she will introduce herself, knowing me, I don't want to mess up her name and spelling or pronunciation. So, Ms. Stewart, will you please introduce yourself today? Yes, thank you for having me. My name is Angela Stewart. I'm a park ranger and the park, the project manager of the Paul Lawrence Dunbar 150th Celebration, working for the D Dayton Aviation Heritage and National Historical Park. Okay, yes. you're a very important lady. You got a lot going on there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a long title. <laughs> and yeah. you have a lot of history and you have a lot of information. Right. And that's so beautiful. We're so glad to have Paul Lawrence Dunbar, we know. And the subject today, we're going to use Dayton Dunbar 150th Community outreach, how's that? Yes, that's great. All right, and so we want to outreach to the community because so many times a lot of people know this name Dunbar. Right. And they know that he was a poet. But there was so much more right. to that man. And I know you have a wealth of information to share with us today. Now, I enjoyed when I come over to your uh, museum not long ago, and I was watching, I learned more about his father, yeah. learned about his mother, and sometimes these things are not even included mm -hmm. in history and okay. studies. So, this is the 150th year, is that since his birth or since his... Since he was born, yes. Since he was born, 150 mm -hmm. years. Okay. That's a long time. Yes. And it's overdue for recognition. So tell us a little bit more about, and I understand you are the director of the 150th as well. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I love the always, since it's a Christian show or a religious show, whichever we want to look at, I always like to use a Bible verse. And one of the things I picked out today before we get started, uh, because the whole Bible, most of the Bible is poetry. When you look at the Psalm, Proverbs, Lamentation, the good and bad original writing, it was poetry mm. that was into songs. So we're in the right place, aren't we? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I decided to go to Job, the 19th chapter, in the 23rd and the 24th verses. And it said, oh, that my words was written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock. Forever. Hmm. Talk about writing. Yes. Joe right. mm -hmm. and so many others. David. Yes. Praise God. So now tell me a little bit more about the anniversary and the 150 years. I'm going to sit back and be quiet because I know you've got a wealth of information to share with us today. Sure. So this year, 2022, marks the 150th anniversary since Paul Lawrence Dunbar was born. And yes, I agree what you, with what you said. It, has, it is long overdue that we celebrate this incredible um, writer, um, literary hero, I would say, from the city of Dayton. Yes. You know, someone who comes from our area, lives, walk the streets that, that we walk. Um, but he was gifted and he cared about his community. So um, one thing that we're doing, the National Park Service, Dayton Aviation Heritage National Historical Park, mm -hmm. DAAV I'll refer to it, um, we talk about the stories of the Wright brothers as well as Paul Lawrence Dunbar. We run the operations for the Paul Lawrence Dunbar House. And so what, we're, what we've decided to do is take advantage of the celebration to reach out to the community, um, pulling on the gifts that different people in the community have, letting people know about Paul Lawrence Dunbar and his life. Yeah. 
-hmm. We, the home that I've mentioned, it's actually the last home that Paul Lawrence Dunbar lived in before he passed away. Yes. And it's a home that he and his mother Matilda Dunbar lived in. And at the time, and I don't uh, want to get too much into that, I'm sure, <laughs> but, <laughs> the history, but as far as the celebration, we're wanting people to visit the home. Yes. It's an incredible um, jewel where people are able to learn about his life. So. Um, we're excited to do that. We actually had a major celebration in June, on June 25th at the Victoria Theater, uh -huh. where people came together who recite Paul Lawrence Dunbar's poetry, people who recite their own poetry. Also, we had invited the Tuskegee University Choir okay. to come and sing um, the Tuskegee University song. Why? Because <laughs> Paul Lawrence Dunbar wrote the song. Yes. So, um, that's one of the major things that we were able to do. But on a monthly basis, I, it was great you were able to join us yeah. for the screening of Beyond the Mask. Yes. That was one of the things that are, is going on on a recurring basis. Okay. So we have different things going on on a monthly basis, encouraging people to host events. We encourage people to um, collaborate on projects. but. Myself, I come from a background in the community. Uh -huh. I love get, getting people together and um, highlighting the gifts that, that each individual has to offer because um, we are definitely better together yeah. and we can really bounce off of each other. And in that way, through families, through um, building people up, that's how things um, that's how communities, and that's how you build community. Yes. So um, I was able to bring that to this role and um, work well with the community in order to celebrate his birthday. So um, it's it's a, an honor for me to be in this role yeah. doing that. Yes. yes. And it's that together we stand, divided we fall. Definitely. That is a good saying, but how many people just use it as a cliche? Mm -hmm. We actually need to come together, right. band together about those things and network together. Mm -hmm. And those things are, mean so much. I, I often point out the fact, I don't know who coined the phrase Gym City, but Dayton surely is a gym. Right. Loaded with talent, information, loaded with history. And every day we walk over, we go past things. Sometimes people come from thousands of miles to enjoy what we have right here mm -hmm. in the city of Dayton. Why some residents have been here for years and never enjoy. And I know you were saying that the Dunbar House is yet open. Mm -hmm. I remember years ago, in fact, once upon a time I went in video, different things, and we used to do the parade mm -hmm. right in front of the house. Uh, mm -hmm. It was very nice. But we don't see a lot of things happening lately. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, we encourage the leadership throughout the city. Mm -hmm. uh, the mayor, the manager, I don't know who all to get in touch with, but we need to get a chance to talk with the principals of the school. Mm -hmm. And even more so at Dunbar. How many students at Dunbar really have any idea other than that he was just a poet? And as you said, and you mentioned, he was also there with uh, the Wright brothers. And I believe he was the school editor of the paper. Of, yes, uh, in, in, at Central High School where he went to, was the only African American in his class. Yes. Attended there. Orville Wright was a classmate of his, yeah. And he stood out so much. His gifting was so great that he was the editor of the newspaper. Yeah. He also was um, the president. He was in. He yeah. took place in the debate. Um, I'm sorry. He took part in the debate club. Okay. Um, he was celebrated. A great orator. Yes. And he also wrote his the school song for the high school. Yes. Yeah. And the thing is, the dialect. I think at during the time, mm -hmm. they blow that up and everybody knew about the law, the law, but he was a very intellectual right. writer as well. Yes. And I feel a lot, of the, a lot of some of the students don't realize it was just not the dialect that everyone so famous for. Mm -hmm. He writ papers and books mm -hmm. and songs, even not only for the local, like you said, for the University of Tuskegee. Mm -hmm. There are other songs or organizations he wrote for. Can you help us with a little of that? 
Yes, definitely. Well, um, in addition to writing the song for the, and, and this is not only writing the school song for the university, but for um, Tuskegee uh -huh. at the time, but we have to think about the fact that Booker T. Washington was the president, uh -huh. as it was called at the time, of Tuskegee. So this major um, figure in African American history, Booker T. Washington, colla was w collaborated with Paul Lawrence Dunbar, yes. respected him, traveled with him, and pulled on him to write the school song. Yes. So. Paul Lawrence Dunbar was a peer to some incredible figures in history. Yes. It just speaks to what his talent yes. and um, what he shared. And as uh, you're, you're absolutely right, he did write in dialect form. And this is during the time when minstrelsy uh -huh. was big. So people tried to box him in to his to only really you know celebrating the dialect yeah. because they wanted to have a certain create a certain image of the dialect however he used even in dialect he just wrote as people spoke yes and he paid uh, 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 he paid homage to people um, through the language yes. and his writing translated to people um, and so um, his dialect was great. However, he was a, he loved books. He loved to read, and he wrote in several different forms yeah. of writing. Four novels in his thirty-three mm -hmm. life year lifespan. Only thirty-three years. Yes. Four novels. Yes, and this doesn't touch on his other twelve books altogether. Yeah, and the dry, and also he also was presented for the Queen of England. Yes. His talent and work. Yes. And he traveled overseas. He did. Quite extensively. He traveled to London. He did a tour in London, England. Mm -hmm. Spent time out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's so interesting. I think we stretched the surface just a little bit. I don't want to tell, tell too much because I know they want to come out to the museum Definitely. and learn. Right. But I was so intrigued about a lot of the things that you just don't hear every day. Even his father. I believe you shared a little bit about his father that almost never heard anything, mm -hmm. any other media that talked about Paul and not my father and how did he travel and walked daily from his home mm -hmm. at quite a distance. What distance between the VA and uh, the old Summit <laughs> Street was? Right, right. The old Summit Street, now Paul Lawrence Dunbar yes. um, Street. But yes, a great distance. Um, and he he got a lot of his drive from his parents. His parents were incredibly strong, formerly enslaved. Um, so walking wouldn't have been <laughs> something that was out of the norm, yeah. but the strength and yes. resilience and what they poured into their son for him to later become this incredible figure who we learn from even today. Yes, and I, I dedicate, I guess we were stronger, more driven when we were younger. When you were saying and I thought about when I was younger, bus fare was probably 10 cent. Mm -hmm. And I would walk quite a distance downtown, so I had some money to spend when I got downtown. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but I was thinking about him, I said, my goodness, it goes also to show the dedication, even they were separated in the home, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the bond that he had to have with his father right. to walk any distance on a regular basis, mm -hmm just to communicate. And I think someone mentioned that some of his writing was influenced about his father's stories. Absolutely, so his father, Paul, Joshua Dunbar, okay. Paul Lawrence Dunbar's father, he was enslaved in Kentucky um, in the earlier years of his life. Uh -huh. um, then he escaped into Canada. Okay. He escaped, but he didn't stop there. When he, um, found out that he had the opportunity to fight for freedom in the Civil War. Uh -huh. He did that. He came back to the United States and fought. Paul Lawrence Dunbar wrote a poem called Colored Soldier, The Colored Soldier, yes. where he speaks about, influenced by the stories that he would have heard, yes. the things that he studied, he speaks about what it was like to be a colored soldier. 
Mm -hmm. you know, fighting and these specific battles that took place. You know, he was a, a historian. He was yes. able to pull out actual historic accounts of the things that happened. Yes. You know, and this would have come from oral history that he received from his father. Yes. You know, he wrote poetry. He wrote stories, short stories, novels, and a lot of works of fiction. However, these things he pulled from his environment. Yes. And it's just really powerful how it resonates with um, even those during that time being African-American and considered three-fifths of a person, mm -hmm. it resonated with people. His gifts transcended yes. the societal norms. Yes, and that yeah. legacy. Mm -hmm. He may not have been a history writer, but he wrote history. Absolutely. Through his father's eyes and through for African-American person. Yeah. Because the literature we have, of course, when I, I don't know about when you come through, but when we come through, there was literally no information mm -hmm on the public school system that told us anything more than he wrote poetry and the la de la poem. Mm. And it's time that we go beyond and understand so much. And I am intrigued even to understand that even through the eyes of his father, his writing surfaced, yes. which would give us another insight from an African-American. When I went to Berlin, Germany, I was told in a particular area I was, there had never been an African-American right. I wish I had now, mm -hmm. but to see it from a perspective of a living Afro-American man, what the Civil War was, his desire right. to come back and fight. He was free as a bird. He was in Canada. Mm -hmm. But it meant so much to him to come back and serve, to be a part of, or even for his family, of the legacy that we have in looking through stuff. And only 33 years, I keep thinking. Right. Mm -hmm. 33 years, oh, the amount of accomplishment. And I know they have to get out there and learn so much more. We're just stretching the surface. Right. We're just letting them know that there's a lot more to be learned than what you have been given over the years. Even a lot of our seniors today, that come up, when I come up, have no idea the information that is there for them. By the way, is there something there for the seniors or is there, uh, I don't know, for the ability to, a mobility to get in and around about the place? That's definitely a great question. So we do have accessibility to get for, for, for um, it's the first floor of the home is ADA compliant. Uh -huh. So yes, people, anyone would be able to see into the first floor of the home, as well as the visitor center. Not only is there the historical home on the property, but there's the visitor center that has exhibits of Paul Lawrence Dunbar and his life, and also an 18 minute film mm. about Paul Lawrence Dunbar. So yes, definitely beneficial for anyone to visit. Praise God. Yes. And so see there, seniors, no excuse. What <laughs> you missed in school when you were growing up is now embraced that you can enjoy another one of the gems, one of the jewels, right here from the Gym City. You know, and I know we talked about a little bit by his father. Y'all got to learn the rest when you go visit. <laughs> and, and also about the mother. I know we hear about Matilda right. from time to time, but something more you might, something we might have missed you want to share a few gems about Matilda. Sure, Matilda Dunbar, very close with Paul Lawrence Dunbar. They had a very close relationship. They loved each other very much and spent a lot of time together. Um, actually, you know, as I mentioned, they, the two of them moved into the home the, um, she, where Matilda lived out the rest of her life, 28 years after Paul Lawrence Dunbar died. So mm -hmm. 1906, Matilda Dunbar and Paul Lawrence Dunbar moved into the home. Now Matilda Dunbar, um, she moved here to, to Dayton from Kentucky Mm -hmm. did not know how to read at the time. Okay. However, once she moved to Dayton, learned how to read and taught Paul Lawrence Dunbar during his early, early years. Yes. And of course, Paul Lawrence Dunbar showed his genius started to, to, to be evident, become evident by the time he was six years old. Yes. She made sure that he went to schools um, and even beyond the time that he had to go to school. 
made sure he went to high school. Not everyone during that time, regardless of race, went to high school. Yes. But Paul Lawrence Dunbar did, and Matilda Dunbar made sure of it. I'm glad you said that, because at this time frame, regardless of the nationality, mm -hmm. very few people got a high school education. Mm -hmm. They would get a few years in school, and they got on the farm, help on the farm, yeah. help work at home. So this was very something special, even during this time for him to get an education and the strength of his parents. I do not want to leave the strength of the parents out. Right. Because even today, a lot of our young people don't realize you are building your child from their home. Yes. The school only can teach so much during the time they have them. But a lot of the teaching is also strength. In fact, I thank God for my parents and my mother. Yeah. She kept paper, strap paper. She kept uh, notes. She kept crayons. She kept pencils. And I see some of that in Matilda. Mm -hmm. We had a piano or something in the house right. all along. Right. And if our young people realize and emulate our young parents, emulate, you have a great part in your child's life today. That's the result of a parent love, the result of a parent care. And all that was put in, we see that man Paul and Dunbar, but sometimes I like to drop back being a parent too. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> to give some shine spotlight that was never shown on his parents. Mm -hmm. But we must realize it was part of making who he was. That's absolutely true. Yes, it starts at home. Yes. And when, from the, the community approach that it's taken, um, when it comes to building community, when it comes to um, people understanding that their voice in the community matters, mm. um, it definitely starts at home. Yes. The building a person up. Yes. Um, a young person understanding who they are. Yes. And that is, I, I like how we're talking about Paul and Stumbar's parents because yes. that's, that's how people grow. That's the foundation. Yes. Yeah. You know, the thing is, if anyone, and today we are filled with so many excuses. People are loaded with excuses why I can't do it, this and that, this people don't like, somebody discriminates, somebody prejudice, all of these things. The time that Paul Lawrence Dunbar and his parents come up, you could multiply that a hundred times, up, maybe a thousand times of what they're experiencing today. Oh, yeah. Yet through it all, through all the opposition, through all the, uh, the, the distractions, right. yet the beauty shone through, the love mm -hmm. of the parents, shows the love of the son to the parent and the community yeah. that calls us to have. It, we just didn't happen. It's a funny thing, I thought I was to tell you one before. I didn't know, but I remember we used to split our hair when we had. Yes. Part it down the center. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, we didn't know all the details, but what little bit we did know, we like to what? Copy. Mm -hmm. We like to emulate. And if our children see something positive in the parents, they want them to go farther. Mm -hmm. I know my parents was. Don't stop or what I stop. Go beyond. Yeah. I've gotten you to square one. You carry it on. Take the torch on. And mm -hmm. you know, I can't help it being a minister. But even the Creator, even Christ said, mm -hmm. when he went back, he said, he told his uh, 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 disciples, he said, greater things you would do than mm -hmm. I have done. Right. Who would not want a child or someone to follow to do greater than what I'm doing? I'm breaking the ice. It's true, yeah. And yeah. so if we would lose, I don't know how it got on that subject, boy, mm -hmm. the competitiveness and began to work together as a community, as a people, mm -hmm. We can excel more and greater things. If this one man, the only minority in his school, at a time when slavery was yet on the brink in some parts mm -hmm. of the country, and yet achieved so much in a time span of only 33 years. Oh, yes. He knew that he had a purpose. He knew that he had a responsibility with what he was given. Uh -huh. uh, there was a quote that um, Matilda Dunbar said, and it, it goes something like this. Someone asked me, why are you educating your son? Why are you educating that boy? 
And in her answer, she said, I did not tell them. I wanted them to see why. Yes. And we all see, you know. Yes. Um, just that strength and knowing what her child had to offer. Yes. And helping to foster that. She knew her role. She knew her purpose. Yes. And that probably um, is why Paul Lawrence Dunbar understood his. Yes. Yeah. It's cultivated. Yes. She was the earth in which he grew from. Mm -hmm. We see the tender plant, but it's the earth that embodied him. Yeah. Even not only in his body, but even as a young man that bloomed forward. So we both see his parents through him. Yeah. And we recognize that. And you know, I, I, I also uh, was thinking that some refer to him at one time or another. And I love to bring these things up because history seemed to leave out the spiritual part of these men. Mm -hmm. And I've often talked about the Wright brothers. Their dad was a bishop. He was a pastor. Mm -hmm. They thought that they, that uh, Wright brothers were going to be ministers. Right. And I understand they also thought that Paul and Dunbar would be some type of prophetic minister. Is that correct? That's true. You know, interestingly enough, Matilda Dunbar wanted him to be a minister. Okay. You know, he was well-spoken. He went to... Um, Eker Street AME, okay. which is now Wayman AME. Yes. And he wrote the Easter speeches, the Christmas speeches that are still in circulation today. Um, so he was well spoken and, and well trained in the AME church. She wanted him to be a, a pastor. Yes. <laughs> um, Paul Lawrence Dunbar had other plans. And actually, he, his first novel is actually called The Uncalled. <laughs> <laughs> where he writes about a, a man that is uncalled. Someone yeah. wants him to be a pastor, but that's not what <laughs> is in the in the works for him. So. Yeah. Well, he's a minister in his own right. He is. Because yeah. a minister, and I said, I might make others angry, but a minister is nothing but a servant. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people get caught up in the title. A title, that's a work, that's a responsibility, rather than something to be so reverenced more above than what they're really there for, mm. because the minister is a servant, and he did serve his community. He did. He served well. Yeah. And you know, we're talking about the Tuskegee, the Tuskegee Choir. Yes. He wrote a song for the Tuskegee, and we're going to show you yes. the choir that come to us, what, this 2022, the 150th anniversary. Yes, and by the way, I went to Tuskegee University, oh, so it's okay. exciting. Okay, yes. alumni, huh? Yes. <laughs> I was wondering if my uh, tech director was ready to bring up that uh, choir, uh, the Tuskegee choir, right here in Dayton, this year celebrating the 150th anniversary. Good evening. <laughs> Paul Ernst Dunbar, was commissioned uh, by Booker T. Washington and the administrators, the other administrators of Tuskegee Institute to write the Tuskegee song for the 25th anniversary of the founding of the institution. So this song was to be uh, revealed uh, in 1906, which would be the 25th anniversary. He had the tune Fair Harvard in mind. That's the tune for the Harvard uh, University at Alma Mater. That's, that's their school song. However, Tuskegee had other plans. <laughs> so we will first sing just the first verse of the Tuskegee song to Fair Harvard. Uh, the men will do it. And then we will sing it as we sing it today to the tune by N. Clark Smith. Tuskegee, the pride of the swift growing south, we pay the honor today. For the worth of thy teaching, the joy of thy care, and the good we have known neath thy sway. O oh, long striving mother of diligent sons and of daughters whose strength is their pride. 
We will love thee forever and ever shall walk through the oncoming years at thy side. Tuskegee, the pride of the swift growing south, we pay thee our homage today. For the worth of thy teaching, the joy of thy care, and the good we have known neath thy sway. O long striding mother of diligent sons, and of daughters whose strength is their pride. We will love thee forever, and ever shall walk through the oncoming years at thy side. Thy hand we have held up the difficult steeds, when painful and slow was the pace. And onward and upward we labored with thee for the glory of God and our race. The fields now to greet us, the forests are glad, the ring of the anvil and hope. Have a music as thrilling sweet as a heart, which thou taught us to hear and to know. O Mother Tuskegee, thou shinest today as a gem in the fairest of lands. Thou gavest the heaven blessed power to see the work of our minds and our hands. We thank thee, we bless thee, we pray for thee years, imploring with grateful accord. Full fruits for thy striving, time longer to strive. Sweet love and true labor's reward. Quite interesting, quite interesting. My goodness, that is a blessing. And they're yet carrying on that legacy there in Tuskegee. An important thing that you shared with me <laughs> during a the break there, your mom and dad met my, at Tuskegee. Well, my grandparents, my mom's grandparents. Parents. Yes. What a legacy. Yes. What was it? What, just briefly, I know we're talking about Paul. What was it? being a student at uh, Tuskegee like? Oh, it was great. I am from Den Denver, Colorado. Uh -huh. And um, ended up at Tuskegee. Um, and it was a, a big change from where I come from. Yes. However, I learned so much. I was able to, to be at a campus every day, walk the grounds that Booker T. Washington walked. Yes. Where Carver, George Washington Carver studied. Yes. So many people have helped to lay the foundation for people, similar to um, what Paul Ernst Dunbar was, did during his time, but for people um, of color, for African Americans to learn. Yes. You know, when there was no other way and um, just such rich history. And it really um, was um, contributed to a, a large part for me sharing um, my own gifts as well as pulling out gifts in other people yes. because we are valuable. Oh yes, yeah. and the drive. Yeah. And that's the thing is a lot of times it seemed like 
the latter, not everybody, but some of the young people, some of the old people today, we look at the after results, but we're not willing to put in the time that no one else see that, that hard time. And the thing you were talking about, his mother so loved her son, the things that would not happen in her time that she could not do, she was able to realize them through her son by putting those things in the son. Mm -hmm. And that's something, I'm back to the parent thing. The parent so loving their children that prepare them. Mm -hmm. And the good Lord got the blessing come up and we get them something to work with. Mm -hmm. Give them some drive. And you say you got some gifts there. You're about, are you a poet as well? I like to write. <laughs> I, I've been writing for years and I have written poetry, yes. What influenced, may I pick it back up? What influenced me so much was that the poet and the poetry and the things that were done before my time mm -hmm. that give me an, uh, what's called a, a platform mm -hmm. that I can too yes. do something. And the models that our parents and those that before us, those things that they were doing, trying to do, we could carry it out. I guess, basically. Mm -hmm. And I believe the same thing happened with your parents. You're some of your grandparents and your mother and your father. Mm -hmm. There were things in their lives that influenced you to do what you're doing mm -hmm. today. Right. I know you didn't come prepared to tell me one of your poems, but, oh. or did you? <laughs> well, you know, I, 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 I'd like to write. You know, it just, it just flows. However, um, I'm not prepared with a poem today. <laughs> not one of my own, but I can definitely um, point to Paula and Stumbar's poem. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I um, think about my father. He um, was just so encouraging when it came to um, doing what it is that, um, to living out your purpose yes. in life. Um, he would always let us know, the three of us, my, me, my brother, and my sister, um, that you, you, you're gifted for a reason, and you have some. We have a reason why we are alive, yes. and so um, he also encouraged us to go to school. You know, it was an ex. It, it was it was an expectation. You know, um, he was he actually moved from Philadelphia to Colorado. And his, he, his mom made him go to school in Colorado. <laughs> so he told us we can go to school wherever in the country that we want. And I took full advantage of that. <laughs> Went from Colorado to Alabama. <laughs> yes. And, um, you know, it was, it was an incredible thing. But just the encouragement and knowing, you know, um, to hear who you are from your parents is very yes. important. Um, and for, from your community, from people yes. in the community. Yeah. yeah. And that gave you a 360 influence. And I like going from one area mm -hmm. where you were all the way up north <laughs> and all the way down south. That was a great change. Mm -hmm. And I used to love, I don't think you was a military baby. Mm -hmm. I, I, I often tell those military babies that they have one of the greatest legacy because they are able to enjoy so many different cultures right. when their parents travel and station in different cities. Mm -hmm. But you were able to do that from where you were in Colorado, all the way down to Alabama, mm -hmm. which was a big change, I know. It was. <laughs> and it the was. people and the culture, mm -hmm. and they enrich the things that you do and yes. even teach others right. in the care. Yes. And I, one thing that I, know, I, I learned in the tra traveling around um, especially, you know, for school, is that wherever you go, people want the same things, need the same things. Yes. And I went from a very, um, f um, I experienced diversity in, at different levels. Yes. You know, but I, interestingly enough, going to an HBCU experienced the most diversity yes. than I ever had before because of the fact that People were from all over the country yes. in different places, you know, every single state, Yes. you know, different walks of life. 
So just experiencing that and seeing not just what people look like, you know, everybody doesn't have the same experiences. Yes. So, <laughs> I mean, and, and the beauty in that is incredible, yes. you know, it's so not to assume, so yeah. not to know, you know, you don't know what people have to offer. So it's, it's like a treasure in each person. Yes. So, and know. there's a diversity in each nationality. Absolutely. Yeah. We are such a diverse people. Mm -hmm. If you go to the Africa, how many different tribes is, how many different languages? Yeah. So, and being a melting pot of the United States is so rich and so much information. And it's so sad that a lot of times we let this go to waste. Mm -hmm. So what can we do to get the community to come up and be more interested? I know we had COVID and all that shut yeah. down, but that practically passed. That should not be something to keep us from mm -hmm. doing. Right. And, yeah. and you have virtual classes. Even. Yes. And, you know, I, I think that when it comes to the community and interest in the, in the community doing anything, um, including taking part in the Palmer and Stumbar 150, knowing that whatever it is that you have to offer, you can mm -hmm. bring to the table mm -hmm. and share. Yes. So we can learn from each other. We um, have collaborated with public health. Okay. You know, and some might think, well, what does public health have to do with the, with the story of Paula and Stumbar, the life of Paula and Stumbar? But we were able to pull out the um, background. Paula and Stumbar had a sister who mm. died before she was three years old. Mm. So infant mortality, yes. that's something that um, we, are, we are really needing to overcome. You know, there's a high, two, the infant mortality rate is too high. Yes. So what can we do to combat that? So we were able to work together with pub, public health. Also, Paula and Stumbar died of tuberculosis. There yes. was not a cure at the time. Um, but there is now yes. and making sure that we identify and go to our doctors. You know, there's so many different ways that um, regardless of the background, yes. we can work together. And in the process, we're learning about Paula and Stumbar. Yes. And that can happen in several different ways with any subject, really. It's about coming together because we can learn from each other in that way. And even his struggle from his health issues, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. It did not stop him right. from using the gift and the talent that he had. Sometimes people might be say, oh, I can't do it. I can't walk like I used to. I can't see. All these little excuses, but all of these, I'm in pain. Mm -hmm. All of those things he could identify with, but it did not stop him with the drive to do those things that he felt that he needed to do. Right. And to help our community realize we all have a drive we should have. We're not going to be here the next 50 years. I don't think I will. I don't think I will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what can we do while we're here now? Right. Or to help someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, Pauline is one of my favorite ones uh, from the Bible. Mm -hmm. And he said, even himself, he said, I, Paul, planted, but Apollos waters. Mm -hmm. And God give the increase. Yeah. We're looking at the increase here 150 years later. Yeah. From the seed of Paul Lawrence Dunbar. What would you say? What, I mean, you're there every day. You're at the house every day. You're dealing with the public every day. What is it from the community mm -hmm. that you would like to see take place? I would like to see poets, people who are poets, to share their poetry, to learn about Paul Lawrence Dunbar. It can be influenced by him or it can be their own. But for, for them to understand that there's a seat at the table for that. We actually have a monthly meeting. Yeah. We meet on the first Monday of every month. Anyone, everyone is welcome to join a Zoom meeting. It's been taking place since January of last year. And we collaborate, talk about Paula and Stumbar, opportunities to host events, projects, activities. People can just be creative and celebrate this person who we have in common from our city um, together. Yes. Yeah. All right. And, and did you remember any of his quotes? Do you quote any of his poems, poetry? So I, 
That's, I can read something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to mess anything up. So we do have selected poems. Not right like now. me, I don't want to miss names. <laughs> I don't want to miss right. <laughs> There's one that um, comes to mind. Let's see if it's in here. Yes, great. So this is the one that came to mind, but I'm not messing up this phone. <laughs> okay. A crust of bread and a corner to sleep in, a minute to smile and an hour to weep in, a pint of joy and a peck of trouble, and never a laugh, but the moans come double, and that is life. A crust and a corner that love makes precious, with the smile to warm and the tears to refresh us. And joy seems sweeter when cares come after, and a moan in its finest of foils for laughter. And that is life. Life. Great. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right. And, you know, I always uh, uh, love to hear about those things that are taking place in our community mm -hmm. that is not right there. And there's so many things in the public we see so much, but it's so much behind yeah. what we see and what we're exposed to. And I know you being in the history historian, you're always digging for new and fresh information mm -hmm. because that's also something that we hope that would get the attention of the public. Yeah. They want them to do more. They want them to study more. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, is there anything else in the final part of our show that you would like because you know yes. a lot of times when I leave the studio and we talk we talk about certain things but we always go through that syndrome coulda woulda shoulda right. <laughs> yes it's real <laughs> <laughs> oh yes definitely <laughs> so I think about the things that are coming up so we're celebrating Paul Lawrence Dunbar Dunbar 150 until February of next year okay um, and in that time, there's, uh, as I said, events that happen on a monthly basis. Well, I mean, several events that happen through the month. Um, but coming up in December, um, the second Tuesday in December will be Dunbar Discussions. That takes place at the Paul Lawrence Dunbar House Visitor Center at 2 p.m. the second Tuesday of December. And there we talk with someone in the community about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And um, the public is, is welcome. Um, it's really laid back and we have a discussion so that people can ask questions about Dunbar, so that people can um, talk about their experiences in the community. Okay. So that's, that's great. Another thing that's taking place in December is um, an old, time Dunbar family Christmas. Mm. So that, that we're collaborating with the University of Dayton Department of Music. I'm sorry. Yeah, the University of Dayton Department of Music. They will be in the house um, singing carols and we, um, there's an opportunity to tour the home mm. and it's festive with Christmas um, treats and different things like that. Just a warm time where um, you experience the house um, as the Pollens, <laughs> yeah, definitely, as the Pollens Dunbar's family would have during that time. Yes. Yeah. And so you are interacting with the community. Oh, absolutely. But a lot of times the community just do not realize, and you are not just doing this 150th anniversary, you are there all year long. Yes. Yes. So there's an opportunity to visit the house. We're open from Friday through Sunday, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. However, during the 150 and beyond, we um, there is an opportunity to reach out to me and schedule a program if you'd like to have your meeting there um, and expose people to the history that is the, the historical home. Um, we can give a tour and you can have um, a great time there. It's important to know as the National Park Service, our parks are everyone's, we, belongs to everyone. So um, spend time there, have special tours through, throughout the week. You have a school group, mm -hmm. you know, we do a lot of school groups as well as, um, you know, if your family is in town, you know, yes. you can reach out to me. Yes. Um, 
and I will definitely arrange to make that happen, wanting to make sure that the community has access. Yes, and I know the, the address, once again, for the Dunbar House mm -hmm. is? It's 219 um, Paul Lawrence Dunbar Street, North Paul Lawrence Dunbar Street. Yes. Okay, and then the, uh, the back side there, uh, the other on it's the other street? It's off of Edison. So um, the, you would access the visitor center off of Edison Street, which, which crosses Paul Lawrence Dunbar Street. Okay, yeah. yes. And you know, I thank you for coming today. And yeah. uh, the, believe it or not, I also had relatives live on that same street across from oh, wow. years ago, but uh -huh. not back in Dunbar's day. <laughs> <laughs> this probably was in the 50s and 60s. Oh, neat. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And so we've seen, we've been there as part of the com community, but uh -huh. so many years we've seen these things, but I'm glad we're not just bulldozing over everything and mm -hmm. closing out the history, especially the legacy we have Afro Americans right here in the city of Dayton. Definitely, yes. Yes, okay. it's the oldest, it's actually the first state memorial created for an African American in the United States. And that wow. took place, um, officially opened in, 19, in 1938. However, it was established in 1936. Can you say again, this was the first? It was the first state memorial established for an African-American in the United States. In the United States. Yes. Surely a legacy. Yes. Surely Dayton is still the gem city it is. of month threats. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not from Dayton, and I'm saying that. <laughs> well, I'm proud I'm from Dayton. <laughs> and more Daytonians need to know that. To, right. to know that we have more of a legacy than just a little, little black guy that wrote poems. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I cannot quit and I cannot stop saying only 33 years in the accomplishment yeah. that was made in such a short life. Right. Also, the first all black cast. Um, on Broadway, he actually wrote for that, that production, which was Clarindy. So there's several things and more okay. to learn about them. Well, we ain't gonna tell them everything. They gotta go down and check and yeah. get to the meeting. Definitely. And come, come down, down and talk about, you know, <laughs> get to talk up the community mm -hmm. and find some little gems that have been hiding behind the closet mm -hmm. in their homes and encourage them, I, I, and, uh, being with the African American uh, uh, African Elders Council, we have a saying that every senior die, mm -hmm. there's a whole library loss. Right, definitely. And we don't need to lose no more libraries. Mm -hmm. We need to come forth, interact, yes. come out with this beautiful, beautiful Miss Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> with a big smile on her dimples <laughs> and all the rest of the staff is there to working with you. Right, right, definitely. This is our park. This our is your park. Yes, yeah. so come on out. Come on out okay. and during the holidays, cookies and mm -hmm. drinks. And yes, apple cider and <laughs> you know, you're just gonna be a part of the family. Yes. You know, we're gonna just celebrate the Dunbar family and you know. All right, praise God. If there's nothing final you'd like to say, in closing. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me today. Yes. And we thank you for taking out of your busy schedule to come and give us the time to share with our community sure. a little more insight about the Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Yes. <laughs>